This is from uh, my new novel that's coming out in December. A Naked Kiss from a Broken Doll. The first corpse was found one week ago. Reports indicated it was a male about 50 years of age who had a reputation for selling narcotics and engaging in stalking and raping. He was well known on the streets by the moniker Pretty Girl. The sex and age of his victims didn't matter. Anybody would do and anywhere he could get away with it was fine. The body had been discovered nailed to a church door. A thick spike was hammered through each wrist and likewise through each foot. According to the coroner, the, the killing occurred around 1 a.m. Saturday. The first person to discover the corpse was the sexton, who arrived at her usual time of 5 a.m. Sunday to prepare the altar for mass. Upon seeing the corpse dangling from the door, eyes open and blind, she vomited. In addition to the previously mentioned wounds, it was apparent that the throat had been slashed from ear to ear and the mouth had been given the Glasgow grin a la the Black Dahlia. A coagulated pool of gore was on the brick sidewalk underneath the corpse. The door was splattered with a dried red color. Deep red hallucinations. Nightmare juice. Before calling the police, the sexton took a slug or two of sacred wine from the tabernacle to steal her nerves. She tasted vomit and alcohol in her mouth which did nothing to mask the aroma of blood and excrement permeating from the corpse. It required all her strength to dial the three digits necessary to summon the cops. After making the call and stating her emergency, she slid down to the pavement, facing away from the body, and stared. She occupied herself with watching the starlings flit in and about the stone pine a few feet away. She started touching her fingertips together rapidly. She needed distractions. The eternal caress of a blood droplet slowly cascaded from one petal to the other. Touch me here, she whispered to a random figure. I'll flog you when it's over. The sound of lead around flesh was broadcast on local channels. She loved these things. It was a time for control. When Criselda awoke at 3.35 a.m., she became aware of a remnant from the previous night's activities. She savored the delicate taste of blood in her mouth. This flavor lay on top of her tongue like a wilted iris, soft, cloying and sinister. How this happened she couldn't recall, but her taste buds tingled. She really wasn't concerned. Hot channels were throbbing in the back of her throat, slightly burning as the sensations snaked their way to her stomach. It always happened this way, so early in the morning in that dead time. Luminous flu was refracting the light off her own skin. For a moment the sound of blood rushing through her veins startled her, then she grew accustomed to it. Multiple exposures made her unhappy. Her thoughts came quickly. Now she tasted iron in her mouth. That thing was happening again. Another life arrived as tortured bones and dust. She whipped every part of her mind until the sounds became sobs. Criselda smirked at the memory of him twitching in a red pool on the floor of his luxurious apartment and the satisfaction she felt when she pulled the blade out. Low moans of pleasure. The click of the switchblade closing and the way it felt. The heft of it in her black leather gloved hands made all the aggravation of stalking and executing him special, worthwhile. Repeated, repeated sto strokes of throbbing stiletto blades. Repeat as necessary until all used up. Prescription for lust. She thrived on these sounds. She lived for the found effects. As her eyes glowed in the purple evening through her veiled face, we could see a glistening tear. She frequently indulged in special effects in the cinerama of shattered desires. Inside the dark factory, personalities were dumped to make room for more pain. She craved the immediacy of the defoliated scenes. Thank you. Woo!